yesterday uh, we were talking about uh, uh, the city diagram the calculus uh, lambda SE and um, uh, if you remember we introduced a number of uh, um, uh, relations uh, on terms uh, of lambda ST, for example, contextual equivalence and uh, uh, denotational equivalence, logical equivalence. And we proved that um, all of them are uh, congruences uh, and that actually they all coincide. So they are all the same relations. So uh, the simple type lambda calculus, in a sense, is kind of a paradise in which uh, um, uh, denotational semantics uh, is easy and it coincides uh, um, and it uses a relation which coincides with the largest uh, adequate uh, congress, namely contextual equivalence, and the same also for the logical relations. But then we also introduced uh, um, a calculus with uh, recursive types uh, and we were arguing that, uh, well, the story is a bit more complicated there. Um, there is no easy way to um, define uh, fully abstract denotational models, for example. Of course, you can define contextual equivalence, um, which is uh, still uh, the largest uh, adequate uh, congruence. By the way, pre adequacy and adequacy in presence of recursive types, of course, are distinct concepts, uh, while they, you know, as someone uh, in the audience argued yesterday, of course, in city type and the type of state, they are the same. Um, but, well, there is no way to define fully abstract uh, denotational models. Uh, actually, it took a little bit of time uh, for the research community to find uh, uh, really good uh, um, and nice uh, fully abstract models. Uh, um, for lambda mu, for example, there are fully abstract models based on game semantics. About logical relations, uh, yes, you can, uh, but you need something called step indexing. Okay. Uh, today, we, I want to talk about uh, applicative by similarity, as I um, was uh, uh, telling you yesterday. yesterday. But um, before doing so, uh, so uh, Thomas suggested that I could maybe reply to one question by the audience. Um, uh, there was uh, like uh, someone among you who uh, asked whether. Um, uh, contextual equivalence of two terms can be proved by just uh, going by induction on context. Uh, of course, uh, this is tempting, uh, but it doesn't work in general, simply because, uh, you know, the hole in the context can be anywhere. In particular, the context can, uh, before acting on the whole, duplicate subterms as much as, uh, uh, as you like. And then, you know, it's then hard uh, to uh, be applied inductive hypothesis, in particular if you take uh, uh, induction on context to be induction on the size of context. Uh, um, so it's hard to get uh, um, a notion of, uh, uh, say, a proof of uh, uh, contextual equivalence uh, which you can, you can escape from the universal quantification on, 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 on all context. Okay, so let's talk about applicative by similarity. So, in a, the right idea by, uh, about uh, applicative by similarity is that, uh, well, you see that more or less like you do in uh, um, logical relations, which are with a couple of differences. In particular, you test functions uh, uh, on the same input and not on related input, first of all. And on the other hand, uh, uh, well, you don't go by induction on types simply because, well, you can't, um, because types can be reduced. And the price to pay is that, uh, well, there is not just one applicative by, uh, by simulation, but there are many. And indeed, the main definition is not the one of applicative by similarity, but the one of uh, an applicative by, uh, or, or applicative, for example, simulation, if you take the, uh, uh, as the, the asymmetric case. So, validation are, let's say, close validation are is uh, an applicative simulation that's the equal 
So if uh, uh, the following clauses are satisfied. And what do you do? Well, um, for, uh, for example, if uh, you care about values first and you start uh, from uh, two pairs of uh, uh, values, uh, uh, VW and VZ, uh, whenever they are in relation according to uh, the type uh, the sigma, uh, cross uh, tau, well, then uh, it must be quite intuitive, this is quite intuitive, that V is in relation to U type uh, sigma and uh, uh, W is in relation with Z type tau. But look, this is an implication. This is not an only, this is not a definition. This is a condition that the relation R must satisfy in order to be called uh, an applicative simulation. And of course, as the name suggests, uh, there is a by simulation game going on here. So this is indeed a form of simulation in which the underlying LTS, if you like, is an, an LTS of terms of computations and in this case, values. Very good. So. Uh, in the case of uh, um, uh, Samson, remember we are also a uh, Samson. Well, if you have two values uh, of a sum type uh, which are in relation, then, well, either the first is uh, in left uh, of a certain values u, and then, uh, well, the second must be itself an in left uh, of z, uh, such that. Uh, well, u is in relation with z at type sigma, or v is in right u, and then also w must be in right of z when, where a u again is in relation with z, this time type tau. But then let's come to the nice case, the case of fixed points. Well, uh, Values of a fixed point type are always in the form fold, uh, fold of something, fold of a value. And so when you have two such uh, values, uh, uh, this is B, this is W, type was new, uh, D, sigma, then, well, you just take B in relation with W and you Put the term uh, in relation according to what? According to a bigger type, a possibly bigger type. And that's why this definition cannot uh, be considered as inductive, because in general, this type here is bigger syntactically and structurally than this type here. And then the other nice. Uh, um, uh, new the novelty <laughs> comes which is about functions when you want uh, when you have that uh, uh, two functions are in relation um, well it must be that uh, for all the value of type uh, uh, sorry, for closed value of type uh, uh, sigma uh, well, it holds that uh, where uh, x takes the uh, v takes the place of x uh, is in relation to f, where v and not a different uh, different value uh, w substituted for x. Uh, Very good. And then the last uh, step is the one about uh, computation. Of course, we also care about computation, but this is quite easy. We have two computations and uh, which have type tau. And then, you know, well, if this is the case, right, it must be that whenever the operational semantics of E is defined to be equal to B, 
then the operational semantics of F is also defined to be equal to W, and uh, it must be that at the level of values, uh, E and R are equal. Again, the two differences are uh, the fact that uh, you don't define just one um, notion of uh, validation between closed values, uh, um, but you define uh, many, and uh, you test functions just on uh, uh, a single, okay, all, all possible values, uh, but uh, the same values is passed to the left hand side and to the right hand side. So this is very much in the style of uh, by simulation. It's not uh, nothing more than a by the usual by simulation game played at the level of uh, um, an LTS of programs. Very good. And then you know what's the fact? The actual uh, the actual application, <laughs> the uh, the relation you really want to use to compare programs. Well, the actual relation is so called uh, applicative similarity. Which is uh, denoted uh, often this way, and it is uh, just the, the union of all applicative simulations. So you just take the union of all of them, and remarkably, what you get uh, is uh, itself uh, an applicative simulation. So it satisfies the condition we have just uh, sketched. If you want to turn into the uh, symmetric phase, you can just define applicative uh, by similarity as uh, uh, the union of A and uh, uh, A transposed. And, and you can afterwards uh, get uh, all these to be uh, an open, um, say, a, a proper term relation. So a relation also dealing with open terms by taking the um, open extension, differently from what you uh, do in uh, uh, in the case of uh, uh, logical relations, which you take uh, the substituting. Okay, very good. Um, so, what what should we say about uh, um, well um, about uh, applicative by similarity? Well, uh, first of all, I want to just take a look at this thing here, this close here. Uh, well, what is it? Uh, yeah, this one. Which like. Uh, Due to the presence of uh, uh, divergence, uh, okay, uh, well, it's, uh, it's not exactly as simple as the similar clause we had for logical relations, uh, because you need to, of course, take care uh, about uh, about the divergence. Uh, okay. And uh, I want to um, rephrase and spell it uh, um, out uh, um, a, a bit differently. Um, as follows. So you can do it by just saying that instead of uh, this implication, the following must hold, namely that the actual operational semantics of B is in relation uh, to the sense of values uh, at the type sigma to the operational semantics of F, but you need to do something. And this something is. Uh, you need to change the relation. In particular, this operator M hat, well, I'm sorry, but this is like a way to turn the natural way to turn a relation R from X. Y into a relation M R from X bottom to Y bottom. 
where X bottom and Y bottom are nothing more than um, X uh, disjoint union the bottom. Okay? Why you take the disjoint union of the bottom and you insist on that? Well, because now we have divergence. So you turn a relation R into a relation uh, uh, taking into account uh, also about the divergence uh, exactly this way. Okay? You, you want the, the, uh, the two things uh, to be in relation when the young, where they, that's what sorry, sorry, when the young, the, the young defined. Okay. And that's it. So you can replace this clause uh, by um, using this uh, operation um, M hat, which, uh, which is quite interesting because we have implicitly, uh, we have implicitly found a way to lift um, a relation on sets to a relation on pointed sets. So a relation of, on uh, sets endowed with a special element to bottom standing for divergence. And if you are familiar with modats, well, this is nothing more than a way to lift the, the relation R to uh, the, the uh, maybe monad applied to um, the, uh, the set of values. Okay, so we have just done a little trick that will be quite useful in the following when we will talk about uh, probabilistic effects. Okay. Very nice. Then, um, yeah. Uh, what should we do? Uh, well, there is another way of presenting uh, applicative by similarity, uh, or applicative, or, yeah, applicative by similarity. Let me write it. It's uh, done uh, as a, like, a, um, by reference to a function, an operator, which given a term relation returns another term relation. And you know, this is quite apparent in the, uh, already in this uh, uh, in, um, uh, definition scheme we have uh, uh, written above, which is however uh, explicitly referring to points, to, uh, to terms to computations. Um, if you want to skip all that and forget about uh, um, uh, actual computations, uh, you can uh, find uh, this uh, uh, um, operator on uh, uh, relations uh, saying, for example, that, uh, well, uh, apply it and uh, if they are interested in values and, uh, uh, well, uh, Consider um, uh, well. Um, you get what you get in output is just the unit uh, identity uh, of, uh, between values of uh, a type, uh, um, uh, a type, uh, and uh, uh, you do more or less the same for all values. And what is interesting is what happens at the end. Uh, over computations, because at the level, uh, at the level of uh, computations on type sigma, uh, applying the operator um, square bracket, uh, well, it's the same as, first of all, applying the operation as semantics, and then composing uh, what you get uh, with uh, the lifting uh, of the relation on values. Uh, and composing it with the transposition of the operational semantics. Okay. So we are, we can, and it is not so complicated actually, you can find all the details and the nodes, by the way. Um, you can define uh, this operator and uh, say that dictated by similarity. Is nothing more than the greatest fixed point of this operator. So you take advantage of the fact that this operator is monotone and you can just apply the usual co induction and end up uh, uh, with applicative by similarity 
not as the union of all um, uh, applicative uh, by simulation or applicative simulation, if you talk about the asymmetric case, but as the grid physics one. Okay, very good. Why applicative uh, uh, the by similarity or similarity are like interesting from the point of view of uh, uh, equivalence of programs? Well, they are quite interesting because you can uh, uh, just uh, uh, prove. Prove that uh, E are contextually equivalent to F by just uh, showing that there is one uh, applicative simulation. Uh, Call it uh, R such that uh, um, E is a relation. Why? Because this implies that uh, well, E is uh, applicative, applicatively related to F. Because R is an applicative by simulation, and so, and so it's included in the largest one. And as we are going to uh, argue now, this implies that E is contextually equivalent. Yeah. How do you uh, prove that uh, uh, this is the case? Well, you need to prove that uh, well, applicative by similarity is uh, 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 um, Congress uh, and that uh, um, it is adequate. Okay. Proving that the uh, the latter holds the fact that uh, um, applicative by similarity is uh, uh, adequate is not at all complicated. It comes more or less uh, uh, by definition. On the other hand, <laughs> proving that uh, uh, applicative uh, by similarity is a uh, 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 congruence or applicative similarity is a congruence. Well, it's uh, quite complicated and it requires us the so called uh, house definition. This is done by so called house following the so called house definition. How does it work? Well, um, you need to define for each relation R a relation RH as uh, the least fixed point uh, of uh, uh, the map uh, X uh, compatible closure, you know what it means, uh, open extension of R. So this is like a trick, a dirty trick, because uh, once you get uh, from R to a relation RH, on the one end, uh, you are sure by construction that uh, RH is a complex. Whenever they start the relation R as some basic uh, um, properties that, of course, are um, uh, that, of course, hold for um, applicative similarity or by similarity. Okay. Just minimal condition. So you are sure that uh, this has the nice. Uh, uh, a nice, uh, uh, all nice properties. You are also sure, and this comes from uh, again from definition, uh, from definition that uh, this is true. So that R is included in um, uh, is a subset of its house extension. This is also called the house extension of, of R. And uh, uh, what is then important is more or less to prove that uh, the other way around holds, so that. Uh, is also the case. So, 
that the RH is a subset of R, because this way you implicitly prove that the two coincides, and since uh, uh, the right hand side RH is uh, uh, a congruence, uh, well, also um, uh, the left hand side is a congruence, and so and you can do that, not in, uh, in all possible cases, but in the case, uh, in the case of uh, applicative simulations. So this is called this, uh, the schema. And it goes as follows. If R is uh, reflexive and transitive, A reflexive and transitive applicative simulation then the house extension of R in its closed version is included in the And this, uh, 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 well, um, it uh, um, uh, tells you that uh, you uh, have exactly uh, what you like because it tells you that, uh, uh, well, um, R is itself here, right? Okay, so it is a, um, a post-its point, and then you can uh, uh, get exactly what you like. Okay, so all together, by way of the house technique, uh, and in particular by way of the uh, lemma, you get that uh, uh, whenever R is reflexive and transitive, R uh, and its out uh, house extension uh, uh, somehow coincide. Uh, and uh, in particular, then uh, since uh, the uh, the latter is uh, um, um, uh, a precongruence, then also the former is a precongruence, and and, uh, and you are fine, you are happy, uh, and uh, we have proved that the uh, applicative uh, uh, similarity and by similarity have all the properties we like um, about uh, notions of uh, uh, program equivalence and refinement. And, uh, and that's that's uh, quite nice. You can also go um, go on and prove that uh, um, applicative uh, similarity coincides with the contextual refinement, and applicative by similarity coincides with the, with the contextual uh, with contextual equivalence. In other words, you can actually prove corollary. Is that uh, uh, is a subset of extraordinary order negative by similarity is a subset of and uh, well um, this means that proving two terms to be contextually equivalent or observationally equivalent can be done uh, by way of uh, um, applicative uh, 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 similarity or by similarity uh, because because the, these two intuitions are actually actually old uh, and uh, this is precisely what you like and uh, for example by a, an exercise that I suggest you to do is to check that for example uh, a couple of terms that uh, we were looking at yesterday um, so lambda x x uh, um, and uh, lambda x the identity of type x uh, are potentially equivalent, and uh, the proof by um, a way of the notion of applicative uh, by similarity is quite easy. It's relatively, it's relatively easy. Uh, it just amounts to show one particular by simulation which includes these two which is not so big after all. 
Uh, you don't need to consider all possible programs. You just need to put exactly uh, the, uh, the right amount of programs or pairs of programs in validation. Yeah. And uh, yes, I think this is a good point to uh, ask for questions, take the question, but I don't think they don't see many. Am I wrong? Uh, me neither at the okay, moment. So good. So this is like a, 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 what I wanted to say about uh, um, go back uh, to lambda mu, uh, in particular to uh, the kind of lambda calculus with the recursive types uh, uh, we have uh, uh, introduced yesterday. We now know that uh, these two things uh, are actually equal to each other. Uh, we have uh, sketched the proof of the inclusion of the latter in the former. Uh, also, the other way around holds, uh, but we don't have time to do the Okay, very good. So we want to. I want to end the uh, part of the course about uh, uh, equivalences by talking about probabilistic effects and about the uh, extensions of probabilistic uh, calculi. With I hope you have uh, already heard about um, randomized algorithms and uh, about probabilistic programs. Um, you know, usually lambda calculi are taken in their deterministic form. So uh, computation is uh, deterministic, uh, but uh, um, programming languages are more um, like uh, very often endowed with the primitives uh, um, for uh, pseudo-random or random uh, choices. And this is quite uh, um, useful in many domains, uh, uh, not only like the algorithmics uh, proper, but also cryptography, for example. Um, and uh, actually extending what we have said so far with the language with probabilistic effects is very easy. It is, I would say, surprisingly easy, uh, and it doesn't take too much time. So I want to show you that all, all what we have said, in particular, uh, logical the use of logical relations as a technique for program equivalence and the use of objective by similarity as a proof, uh, as a proof technique for program equivalence in presence of recursive types. Well, um, all these scales quite well to uh, a language in which uh, um, um, probabilistic effects are available. And how do you endow your language uh, with uh, um, primitives for probabilistic choice? But uh, there are many ways to do that. The simplest arguably is just uh, saying that, uh, well, um, your computations, uh, uh, do not just include uh, the usual ones we know, but they also include a new one called sample. Q, where Q is a rational number between zero and one. And the, uh, the intended meaning of sample is um, as a primitive which returns either true or false uh, with probability Q or pro and probability one minus Q. So this means that the static semantics of sample Q is the one of a term of Boolean type. So intuitively, this is already enough, right? <laughs> uh, because you can just flip a biased coin, uh, getting true or false with probability Q or probability one minus Q. And depending on the outcome by way of the if the lens construct, uh, well, you can do completely different things. In particular, by way of sample, you can uh, define as syntactic sugar the probabilistic uh, sum of the two terms n and n uh, by way of uh, if the lens construct. Well, about the dynamic semantics, of course, uh, uh, you know, 
something needs to be needs to be done, and something quite, uh, I would say, not uh, so complicated, but uh, not um, trivial, uh, uh, but not trivial too. Um, particular now, we cannot say that the outcome of a computation is uh, a value, or it is either a value or undefined. It is actually a distribution of values. Okay. So, whenever you evaluate uh, a computation, what you get is uh, uh, like possibly many values, each with uh, its own probability. But actually, that's the only thing we need to do. We need to, uh, first of all, uh, realize that we want to work with distributions. Which are just uh, maps from a set, uh, the set of real numbers between zero and one, okay, such that uh, um, call it equal is uh, not t, such that t of x is greater than zero for the number of the In this element in the set of big X, and, uh, and you also want that the sum of the all the DXs for all X in big X, well, it is uh, either equal to one, and uh, in this case, we talk about uh, distribution proper, proper distributions. Or that it is uh, smaller than one, smaller or equal to one. In this case, we call the we, we, we speak of sub distributions. Okay, very good. And uh, what can you do with uh, uh, distributions like big? Can define an operational semantics to programs, uh, and uh, particular substitutions are particularly uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, for our purposes because uh, um, not requiring uh, the sum of uh, all the dxs uh, uh, to be one, but uh, just uh, requiring it to be less or equal to one, uh, so between uh, zero and one, uh, is an, a way to implicitly account for. Um, for divergence. So if uh, a computation evaluates, uh, let's say, to the empty distribution, call it uh, zero, it means that it always diverges. So zero of a value B is equal to actually the value zero. Perhaps the distribution applied to each value of x. And then you know there are, there are other ways of forming interesting distributions, for example, so-called Dirac distribution. Which is uh, which returns one uh, on the um, parameter value v. And uh, sorry. one uh, if e zero. Okay. And uh, you know, apart from that, uh, you don't need uh, anything more. Um, the Dynamic semantics, the operational semantics is the usual one, <laughs> except that, uh, well, of course, now if you don't, uh, um, if you don't fit the, the operational semantics with a high enough uh, step index, uh, so the step index is zero, but you just return empty sub distribution, 
On the other hand, to uh, feed it, uh, uh, well, to try to evaluate this new computation sample Q and uh, the step index is high enough. Well, what you return is uh, either true with probability Q or false with probability one minus Q. This tells you that uh, you know there is a nice way to, co to combine distributions by way of convex uh, combinations, uh, which is uh, pretty standard in the pool of probability theory. Anyway. And uh, whenever you have uh, a computation. Is just in the form of the like you just the Hiraka. And uh, the nice thing is about uh, uh, like, I don't want to keep all the other process, but the close for left is quite nice. Because, uh, um, well, what, how can you how can you proceed? Well, uh, you first of all need to evaluate, uh, the, and as usual, uh, you do it with the step index uh, n. But well, this is a distribution, right? So, for all possible values that you get out of the evaluation of t, well, you need to um, kind of check what uh, f where x is substituted with uh, v actually produces in output and how can you combine all these when you take the sum over all value of the, the probability of observing v when evaluating v and multiplying this probability by um, this distribution how, uh, down here and so this is like an example of a convolution, um, which in monadic terms is nothing more than the bind operation in the classic people would like. And then, you know, um, this sounds a bit complicated, but in fact, uh, well, um, we have designed the booty, we have designed the operational semantics uh, um, of our starting language in such a way that all these extensions are easy, right? Um, now, of course, the uh, operational semantics, uh, the approximated operational semantics uh, goes uh, uh, from uh, 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 like it's a closed term and it returns a distribution over values uh, of those values of the same um, of the same uh, of the same type. Okay, so you, what you get out of all this uh, is the um, least upper bound of the uh, omega chain uh, that you uh, get out of step indexing. Okay, very good. So we can uh, uh, easily pretty easily uh, generalize uh, static semantics so, uh, dynamic semantics uh, 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 to um, a language with probabilistic effects. How about program equivalence? Um, well, uh, let's talk first of all about logical relations. Maybe you are kind of uh, uh, afraid that uh, well, one needs to um, uh, rebuild the whole theory from scratch and do a lot of efforts uh, uh, in such a way that uh, you know everything works, uh, uh, that everything works well, that the probabilistic effects are um, you know uh, considered uh, um, and they are like um, uh, taking appropriately into account when finding the logical relations, but. Uh, uh, it's not really so. So the full construction that we saw for the simple type lambda calculus, uh, by the way, we are doing it uh, 
los conceptos y que se Let's not to consider exponents. We have not built any form of logical relations for um, type D points uh, in the deterministic case, so there is no reason to take it into account when, uh, when we go when we switch to deterministic points. But you know, all the work we have done in the deterministic uh, framework uh, in the deterministic scenario, well, scales quite uh, well. There is one point, however. Which should be, which needs to be taken into account. If you take the definition of uh, um, the logical relations, there is one point which is crucial. So, when you when you are defining logical relations. Uh, for computations at level at type sigma, but you take it by definition, okay, as uh, logical relations, logical equality, whatever, at the level of values, same sigma, where you pre-compose it uh, with uh, operational semantics and you post-compose it. Uh, transpose of the operations. So that was our definition. In other words, uh, when you want to uh, prove that uh, E, this is what we write, that uh, E and F are here. Well, you first of all compute uh, the uh, value which, uh, to which E evaluates, then uh, you have it on the left hand side here, then uh, you kind of uh, uh, go up here and you get another value here. And look, you want the two values to be in relation uh, with respect to logical relations on values. And that's pretty simple okay? because uh, uh, operational semantics, uh, uh, in the case, uh, the simple type lambda calculus, the operational semantics of the uh, simple type lambda calculus uh, gives you a value for each computation and just one value. Well, in the probabilistic case, uh, it's not exactly the same, right? Well, if you try to do exactly the same, In particular, it's like I have something like this. But this definition would not work because here, let's say, better, here you have a function which uh, we have just written here. It returns a distribution of values and not just one value. And so you cannot uh, 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 put uh, this guy here in the middle because this is a relation on values. This is not a relation on distributions of values. So one needs, in other words, A way to lift this relation here, which is again a relation on value, to a relation on distributions. Do you have any idea about how one can do that? I'm sure that uh, in one of the courses in the summer school, 
someone told you about a way to do, maybe not exactly so, but uh, to do something similar. Try to think about it. Absolutely, Jonas is uh, is, uh, is right. A crucial notion here, um, which can be quite useful, uh, is notion of coupling. So, uh, if you want to uh, just um, put two distributions in relations, uh, um, well, you need to find a coupling between them, and that's let's recall what a coupling is. So, given two distributions and not sub distributions, E and E over X and Y, we say that a third distribution. Call it C over the Cartesian product of X and Y is a coupling. Um, when, if the marginal that you get consider all possible values of y. Um, remember that this is like a, an area number between zero and one. It's the same as just the x. And the marginal that you consider if you just take the all possible values of x um, is uh, uh, e y. So that's it. This is exactly the notion of coupling you have seen, um, I guess, I'm actually quite sure, in uh, just this uh, course about uh, in, uh, probabilistic reasoning about programs. Um, and then, you know, we just have to find the right way to use couplings uh, as a way to lift uh, relations on sets uh, uh, up to relations of distributions. So, even a relation. R between set X and set Y, the relation D R, which goes from distributions, uh, distributions of X. Uh, Distributions of Y is defined as follows. Two distributions are uh, related uh, according to the relation we have defined, if and only if. There exists a coupling between uh, E and E. This is, by the way, the set of all couplings. There is, there is the coupling which does what? Uh, uh, such that uh, whenever, whenever it assigns a certain probability greater than zero, 
strictly to a pair x, y well, this means that x must be in the shooter. So the coupling must not just be a coupling between E and E, but must be a coupling such that the uh, elements uh, to which the coupling assigned, the pairs of elements uh, to which the coupling assigned positive probability are precisely the pairs of elements in the relation R. Not precisely, but are um, included in the elements uh, 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 of the relation. Seen as pairs. So, all this just to find a way to lift a relation on values up to a relation on distributions of values. But then, well, we are almost done. <laughs> because what we want to do, what we would like to do, and it actually works quite well, is just to take this idea here. Go up here and uh, put it here. So we, we don't need to do anything else. Okay. The whole uh, meta theory um, uh, actually stays the same. Um, and we just need to change. Uh, Little place where um, probabilistic effects show up uh, um, uh, in their essence, namely in the evaluation of uh, whenever you evaluate computations. And whenever you handle computation, in particular, the way you handle values uh, is, uh, is exactly as before. And uh, you get the fundamental lemma, and uh, you get, uh, of course, uh, that uh, the notion of logical relations. Uh, uh, Get that is included. Uh, uh, there is a question if such a yes. coupling always exists. Uh, uh, you know, yes, uh, there is a way to um, uh, lift uh, actually any relation uh, on. Uh, uh, Sets to a, a relation on distributions. So, um, if uh, this coupling uh, uh, C does not exist for particular uh, distributions, well, then the two distributions are not in relation. Uh, of course, there are distributions for which this coupling does not exist. And in this case, uh, the two relations are not, uh, the two distributions, sorry, are not in relation. So uh, the answer is no. It's not true that. Uh, must always exist. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, I want to spend uh, just uh, um, some more minutes, but very, very few minutes because, uh, because it's uh, the same story. Um, with uh, applicative uh, applicative by similarity. So um, can we play this exactly the same kind of game? Um, uh, we saw at the beginning of this lecture on the uh, deterministic lambda calculus with the uh, type X points, uh, uh, but in presence of probabilistic effects, uh, namely, uh, can we define a notion of applicative, of probabilistic applicative, uh, uh, applicative uh, uh, similarity and by similarity? Well, um, the answer is yes. <laughs> of course, this was not the the, the the way it was discovered, uh, uh, actually discovering it took uh, a lot of time, and uh, um, we, I was involved in it, and it didn't go through um, at all the notion of couplings at least at the very beginning. But then we realized that what we got uh, when trying to generalize in applicative similarity for 
values with probabilistic effects. Well, it's an instance of the same story, of exactly the same story. So remember that applicative equation similarity is based on a, uh, an operator which turns a term relation uh, into uh, another term relation called the square bracket. And uh, the interesting part uh, here is uh, how, um, say, the computations are treated in the, uh, the square bracket of uh, R at the level of, uh, computa of the computations at, uh, for the type sigma. Um, it's nothing more. Right. This is what we get. And basically, everything has boils down from here. So it was. Uh, uh, um, here. Oh, okay. Yes, this one. But again, we are facing exactly the same problem here as the one we saw for logical relations. Because, you know, uh, the, the operational semantics here gives you back a distribution, and not just a, you know, um, a possibly undefined value uh, uh, like the one uh, this relation um, asks you to. Um, provide. So there is a mismatch. But again, this mismatch can be solved by just taking this uh, way we've just seen to turn um, a relation up to um, uh, a relation on set up to a relation on distributions of that set. And notice that uh, here you have something interesting. Because you have um, like a, um, you know, this is a relation in the form x uh, uh, bottom itself, and this uh, then forms a relation on distribution of, of x uh, distribution. Is so apparently this is a bit strange because you have on the one end, uh, um, you know, a, 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 um, a function which returns a sub distribution. And then here you have a distribution over point and set. But actually the two are exactly the same. You can see a sub distribution or uh, like uh, as a distribution over a set which also mentioned divergence. Okay? And that's the way you reconcile the two worlds. So, sub distribution. Can be seen as a distribution over uh, sub distribution. on X can be seen as a distribution, sorry, a distribution over X bottom. Because the, let's say, the gap between uh, the sum of the distribution and one is nothing more than the probability of divergence. And that's why you can kind of reconcile um, the two things, getting uh, uh, first of all, the operator you, you want, and uh, at the end of the day, a notion of um, applicative by similarity. So, applicative uh, uh, by similarity is, as usual, the greatest point of this operator. 
How about uh, um, food abstraction? Well, uh, it's interesting because this way you get a notion of uh, uh, equivalence, which is fully abstract, which coincides with contextual equivalence. But this result is very fragile, and this is extremely interesting, I think. It works uh, for call by value evaluation and not for call by name evaluation. While, for example, food abstraction in the case of deterministic lambda calculi, well, uh, this uh, holds both uh, for call by name and call by value evaluation. So uh, going through the uh, a calculus with probabilistic choice make uh, the food abstraction less robust uh, a result. Um, it is quite fragile, quite brittle. Um, to go even beyond uh, and get uh, uh, the notion of uh, ability by similarity for calculus like with non deterministic effects, for example, uh, well, there, food abstraction almost ne actually never holds. So this is quite interesting. Field abstraction uh, changes when you add the probabilistic effects. I can also tell you more. Um, me and Francesco, we have also studied uh, um, what happens if you uh, generalize uh, uh, what we have said about probabilistic effects to calculi with um, arbitrary effects, in particular with uh, effects in the form of uh, um, uh, algebra uh, effects. So this scales to calculate algebra effects. Like no determinism. Um, global store. Exceptions, IO. And uh, well, what you get is a, a pretty reasonable notion of uh, equivalence between programs, which is always um, uh, a congress or a pre-congress with the asymmetric notion. Okay, very good. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Actually, this ends uh, the uh, part of the course about equivalences, and I would like to spend the last uh, 10 um, minutes of today's uh, uh, lecture talking about metrics uh, and to introduce metrics, and we will devote the full uh, uh, last lecture about the uh, So let's uh, switch. Okay, wonderful. So um, up to now, you know, everything basically was a relation, right? Programs were compared, been compared. So a relation on uh, R well, is the, the set of all permutations. Well, uh, it can be uh, uh, seen as a um, like a, uh, a black box, which given an input uh, a pair of programs, uh, a pair of computations, uh, EF, it either tells you uh, Zero or one. Okay. With zero, we, uh, what we mean is that B and F uh, are not uh, equivalent. One, we mean B and R. But 
but we are, as we argued uh, at the beginning of the first lecture, well, very, very often in many different uh, scenarios, uh, well, this is not uh, this is not enough. There are many pairs of non-equivalent programs uh, which are actually quite similar. Uh, on the other hand, there are many pairs of uh, non-equivalent programs uh, which uh, have nothing to do with each other. And we, we would like to give a more a refined, a more informative judgment about uh, uh, the relationship between these uh, 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 this non-equivalent programs. Okay. So, uh, in other words, if here, you know, the result is uh, a Boolean value, uh, we would like to go to a scenario in which uh, something is still done here, if zero, zero, of this interval, namely the distance between D and F. Maybe D and F can be very, 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 very close. And uh, this means that they are at distance zero. Uh, or they can be uh, very, very, very far apart, possibly being at the maximal distance or at the infinite distance. And that's it. Uh, this is what we will uh, um, try uh, uh, to, to do. And uh, what uh, to take the place of uh, um, allegations are just distances. So, uh, functions uh, mapping uh, pairs of programs into any element between uh, zero and, uh, and infinity. And so, you know, the first uh, um, question one uh, uh, should ask is what's the structure of these program distances? What kind of uh, properties we assume from these uh, uh, program distances? You remember that uh, well, we have uh, always, from the very beginning, talked about uh, program equivalences because the axiom. Uh, of uh, equivalence relations is like perfectly uh, are perfectly fit uh, for the kind of reasoning we want to particular we want uh, uh, an element x to be in relation with itself this is recessivity we want that the r x y implies r y x symmetry and we also want uh, R X by uh, R Y Z by R X Z, and that's so called axiom for for equivalences, and uh, this has a very nice correspondence, very uh, you know very. This in correspondence for the distances, which are just the action for the pseudo -metrics. In particular, you would like mu x x to be greater or equal to zero, not necessarily zero. Sorry. Uh, the distance between x uh, and uh, itself, of course, must be zero. Sorry. We also want uh, uh, the distance between x and y to be greater than the distance between y and x. And this corresponds to the previous, uh, um, to the symmetry action for equivalences. Of course, we can play twice with it and get that as well. Just the same. And uh, the third one is probably the one you are more familiar with, uh, which is that it's called triangular uniformity. So if you have distance between x and y, and you sum it uh, with the distance of y, z, uh, right, you get uh, something that must be greater than distance uh, x. 
you see that you know this shows that there are like some parallelism parallelism between uh, the logical and and the plus a parallelism between logical integration and uh, um, the greater or equal uh, uh, relation between uh, between values um, and uh, the if you like an implicit parallelism uh, between uh, the fact that something must hold and the is so pseudo metrics are exactly what we would like to use um, as a replacement for uh, uh, equivalences. Uh, particularly, you want uh, uh, that uh, um, if uh, a certain program X uh, is uh, at that certain distance from Y, and then from Y you can go to another point uh, Z. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, uh, not worse. Uh, then going directly from X to Z. The same thing about uh, symmetry. Going from X to Y is not worse than going from Y to Z. So that's it. We will uh, develop, uh, to, starting from tomorrow, um, uh, notions of distances between programs by way of uh, uh, But then, you know, let me just, uh, you some hint uh, about uh, what takes the place of compatibility. So how about compatibility? Mm -hmm. In, in uh, relational reasoning, in the purely relational reasoning, compatibility can, can be seen as the following condition we spell it out differently of course but if you have two terms e and f which are in relation and you choose any context c well uh, also c and d and c and f must be in relation actually we you know this is like the base of compositional reasoning uh, and we were um, taking it as uh, uh, something quite uh, you know like a crucial property of our uh, notion of uh, uh, program equivalences and uh, uh, refinement from the very beginning. But how about uh, the same thing when uh, R is replaced by U? Okay. What can we say about uh, the distance between E and F? If you want it to be let's say uh, such that compositional reasoning is supported, well, you want it, the distance between E and F to be greater than the soup over all context C of the distance between C, E, and C. In other words, by looking at just the distance between E and F, you know already how far apart C and E and C and F can be in the worst case whenever you take uh, a context C. And that's why you take the soup. Okay. Maybe it can even be great bigger than the soup. But in particular, there cannot be any context which separate uh, E and F more than what the distance between E and F tells you already. And there is a perfect, um, there is a perfect uh, correspondence between, between these two definitions. Okay. That's what we follow. That's, what, that's the path we will follow. Uh, we will just take the um, perfect analog of the notion of compatibility, um, uh, but for metrics. And we will see, you know, what we end up with uh, if we do so uh, in the settings of uh, lambda calculi, with uh, possibly with recursive times. Okay, I think it's uh, uh, time to stop. I don't see many questions, but uh, if you want to ask any now, maybe.
one yep. can. Uh... Thanks for the lecture. I have two questions. Yes. The first one about exactly this inequality. Can we uh, swap uh, the sign and choose the metric in a way that it is minimal distance between two So something like this. You're suggesting something like this. Yep. Well, uh, or less than or equal to okay. infinity. Yeah. yeah. Yes, if you do so, however, um, you know, you are very, uh, I would say, optimistic about the context in which E and F will be placed. Uh, while uh, by taking this thing up, up here, we are pessimistic. Very much in the, st in the style of usual compatibility up here. In usual compatibility, we want two things to be equivalent uh, only when they behave the same in all possible contexts. It doesn't, I would say, uh, it, it uh, doesn't matter if the E and F uh, are behave the same in one specific context, because you don't know in which context the two will be operating. Uh, and so you just take is for all quantification. The for all quantification becomes very much close to, to this sum. So while the if the um, uh, the if you you are suggesting to take here, uh, it would correspond to take this at the level of the relations. So something like this. See. Yeah, all right. Thanks. And, uh, you know, I would say that it's more natural to take universal quantification because you don't know the context. You want to know a notion of uh, program equivalence and a notion of program distance to account for the worst case. All right, thanks. Uh, then the, the second question kind of goes back to the uh, equivalences. Yes. yes. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, with respect to simply type lambda calculus, uh, we kept these equivalences kind of stratified by a type. So yes. we uh, compare on the yeah terms of yeah. the same type. Should I go back to maybe the one something I wrote? Uh... Well, then probably not necessary. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> to going back that far. So the question uh, exactly in the case of simply type lambda calculus yes. kind of seems to make sense to have uh, equivalence going between types. In the simplest case of identity function, we have lots of these identity functions and citation instantiated with every single time, but we kind of have an intuition there, all are the same function. Yes, yes. Um, I, I think I, I, in principle, I agree with you. Um, but, and indeed, when you, for example, consider notions of um, um, uh, polymorphic lambda calculi, uh, there are ways to compare, um, uh, to compare terms which have different types. Uh, um, by taking their so-called principal type, uh, namely the most general, most generic, more abstract uh, uh, type for which, from which all the other types which can possibly be attributed to the program uh, can be obtained as instances. Um, but you know, once uh, you uh, decide to work with simply type lambda calculus, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 there are like um, there are like many ways to proceed, uh, but the way we proceed here is to uh, uh, consider types as an inherent property of, of of terms. So any term comes equipped with a type. Of course, the same term can be assigned many different types, uh, but uh, you assume the term and the type to be somehow. In, in, Visible. <laughs> so uh, when you want to compare 
two terms, if you like, uh, you fix uh, an arena, a, a place in, uh, in which the two terms uh, uh, must be compared, and uh, this is a type, and uh, this must be a type which uh, can be attributed to um, one and the other term. So, of course, uh, you know, uh, the identity, as you mentioned, is equivalent to itself um, on all possible types. Um, and you can assign many possible types to them, uh, to, to the identity, actually. Um, uh, but once you have decided one, it's very easy to prove that the identity is. Uh, 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 equivalent to itself, in particular, because uh, all kinds of programming equivalents we have uh, introduced are flexible. I don't know if it answers this is your question. I think this is a design choice. The fact of uh, just comparing uh, terms uh, once a type uh, is fixed. The type, yeah. com the type comes first, if you like. Yes, well, my question was exactly about if uh, this other choice is possible, if it's possible to build a relation that's kind of middle ground, we still work with simple type lambda calculus, but somehow, uh, yeah, consider eco equivalent terms at different types that still have the, the same structure, like polymorphic. They would be as polymorphic know, in the. As far as I know, if you just stick simple type lambda calculus, this has not been done. Uh, yeah, but, okay, uh, I see. Maybe in the literature, yeah. there are some hidden places in which uh, people have done so, but if we stick with the simple type lambda calculus, I would say no. Yeah, I think there, there might be real yeah. issues with this uh, condition in all contexts, because then the types yeah. might not fit. Yeah, yeah but that was my question whether yeah. it's of course known, in the untyped something lambda, known or not. Yes, yeah. yeah. you can Thanks. you can work with so called untyped lambda calculus and their um, types are not there and it's an pure anarchy and uh, many of the things I've said uh, can be spelled out in the untyped lambda calculus too. Um, and you don't have any issue with types there <laughs> because it's like taking just one type. So it's just one and Ugo. a single time. Yes. Ugo, I suggest you take uh, other uh, question offline, maybe on Slack, okay, because you. we have the tutorial starting in 10 minutes so that uh, oh, people can have a break. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much for the attention and see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we will devote the whole, the whole uh, day to metrics. Thank you. <laughs>